unaltered. There is magic in the mundane, bliss in the banal. The day is your dharma. I'm your host, Amaryllis, Ayurvedic health counselor, yogini, and Akashic Records reader. And this is your life, Altered. Hello and welcome back. Oh, we are about to get into it. This is a big week coming up and I want to keep this podcast relatively short and simple. It's mainly about a ritual and some practices that you can do because this is starting, you know, today, it's Monday as this is released. It's starting off some some big things. Big things are happening. And I just wanted to say, you know, it already has started because this past weekend, Venus went direct. Yay. Mercury is going direct later this week. And, um, you know, just even outside of energy and astrology and um, planetary things that are going on, we've got the Winter Olympics starting. Ah! So, you know, the the globe is just going to be um, absorbed in in the Winter Olympics and these, you know, high caliber performers. But we are now starting this week off. I hope that you have used January as I see it as this planning, prepping, clarifying, organizing reflection month. I'd mentioned in the podcast uh, last week that I basically see the time from, you know, right after the holidays until um, the lunar, almost the lunar new year to really ask myself and reflect on the past year and ask myself, well, okay, based off of this past year, what do I want? What is coming? So I've got it all clear for myself. And I know that, you know, in these next couple of days, I'm going to be doing a lot of meditation, prayer and ritual an intention setting, but then also um, I'm going to be starting my prep for my annual, or not my annual, <laughs> my seasonal cleanse. So every spring, every fall, I do a seasonal cleanse. And I was reflecting last year, both of them um, were not so deep. They were, you know, it was a, it was more of a light cleanse which is fine, but I want something deeper. So I'm going to um, go deeper into it this year. You're welcome to listen to last year's podcast episode about preparing for that and kind of how I do my seasonal cleanse. It's not about fasting. It's not about starvation. It is about taking things off the plate, such as social media or listening to tons of podcasts like I do. And in terms of nourishment, I have a mono diet for about a week of kitchery. But the big part of it is up leading up to that point. So for the two weeks, usually it's two weeks this year, I'm going to do uh, three, I will kind of prepare myself for it so that it's not so reactive when I'm actually in the cleanse and my body and my mind aren't freaking out. So I, you know, stop all sugar, caffeine, dairy, um, meat. I decrease that until, you know, at least the week before the cleanse I'm off all of it so that I'm ready to just go deep. And right now, something fun that I'm engaging is, is something that I started last year. I think it was last February. I was really getting into this and then mom got really sick and then passed and I just kind of let everything fall away. And to be honest, kind of forgot about doing this, but I'm making these videos with, um, with TikTok and now Instagram has reels and they also have the captions and I am also able to do voiceovers. So I'm starting to play with that and, and do record my own little videos and starting to add my voice to it because I, I like the recording of my voice, but, um, yeah, now since I started a podcast, I kind of have the microphone so I can do it in a better way. And, um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm excited about that. So keep an eye on social because I'll be making um, and playing with until I find like really what I love. I'll be playing with um, making those videos on Instagram and YouTube, or excuse me, <laughs> TikTok. Ah, because I've been obsessed with TikTok since the pandemic started. So I figured, okay, just why not go ahead and start making? And it's really not about um, 
getting a following. It's really just about creating. I just, I want to make these. And that's really what it's about is creating the art that you love. Okay, so let's get into this. We've got the new moon, which is today, Monday, and then tomorrow there is the lunar new year. And then the day after that, we have 2 to 2022. And that time in between the 2nd, February 2nd, till the date of the 22nd, you know, to 22, 2022. Um, I think it's a, it's a huge deal. And I think that ending on the 22nd is also on a Tuesday. So there's just, you know, uh, some powerful numerology going on there. And I think this is a really special window. So this is the time I would this week, and it doesn't have to be today, but in the next couple of days, I would really plant intentions, goals, dreams. I would set them and do some aspect of this ritual that I'm about to describe. Because now is the time. It's, it's, we're starting off new year energies. So first, if you haven't already, and even if you have set your intentions and, you know, you did the whole New Year's Day thing, redo it and work with the energy of, of um, the new moon and the lunar new year and the two, 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 two. <laughs> work with that and maybe even revisit this every single month on the lunar, or excuse me, on the uh, new moon. So this isn't just a one time January 1st, I did it, I'm done, and I never look at it again. So even if you've already set intentions, revisit them and maybe do them in a different way and ritualize them in this way. Okay, so write them down. If you haven't written them down by hand on something physical, I would do that. Write down what it is that you deeply want for the coming year, month, um, life. What is it that you want at both surface level and at the soul level? Honor both of them. And then you're going to write down the resources that you already have in order to help support you. And these can be financial resources, resources of people and support or connections, resources of time, of energy, of opportunities, you know, anything. Write down all of the resources that you already have, whether you engage them or not, you know, whether you're, um, you know, just because somebody could be a connection and you're not currently connecting with them, write them down, write that person's name down anyway, whether you intend to connect with them and, um, reach out for support or help and, you know, connect with them as a resource or not, you just acknowledge they're there. So all the resources that you already have. And then write down all of the resources that are still needed. And get specific. Get specific about what that is. All of the resources that are still needed to help you manifest and create, co-create what it is that you deeply want. You're looking for specifics, but you're also looking at big picture. So those are my ideas of what to write down with your hand on paper of some sort. And it does make a difference. You know, you want to work. There's something about the hand brain connection. There's something about uh, physically writing it on paper. So try that. Next, we come to the ritual part of it. And you can do any and all of this, you know, make it as much and as quote unquote big as you want, or just, you know, pick one or two of these ideas to really engage with and, um, and ritualize this, your, your desires to ritualize the, the setting of your intentions. Okay, so my first thought is, 
And something that I do is I place it on the floor, wherever, below wherever I'm sitting. And I'll extend my arms outward with my palms facing down so it's over the paper. And I'll close my eyes and I will just imagine and envision that I am opening up the palm chakras because we do have chakras on the palms. I know everybody thinks, you know, it's just on the spine, but um, there's other places on the body that have these uh, energy centers. So open up the hands and I will just channel through uh, this feeling, this energy of, I don't want to say wish granting, but um, this, this energy of making it so. I hold my hands over it and I make it so. And I'll stay in this position for several minutes, just holding those dreams and those intentions in my mind's eye, channeling the energy through from my hands down into the paper. And I will play a certain kind of mantra and I'll sing to it. You could also choose a piece of music that feels really powerful to you, that feels really moving, like, yes, I can make it happen. This will happen. And be careful with the words, whatever music you choose, because you want the words to fit the mood. So, you know, if it's something, you know, like a powerful breakup song, like F you and I'll get over you, not the best song, you know, the energy of it is like, yeah, you know, you feel powerful, but the, the languaging of it doesn't quite work. So choose music if you want, or mantra, if you want, not necessary. You can simply hold the hands over it and really imagine and feel and trust that you are channeling this um, cosmic energy through you and down through the hands and really setting it over these intentions that you've written. So the second thing is to place that piece of paper or sheets of paper, if there are several, under your pillow, maybe for the next few nights. And in the morning, make sure that you have a journal next to you and Notice whatever dreams are coming through as you're doing this, you know, so you write it with intention, you charge it with intention, and then you place it underneath your pillow at night. Third, after I've given it some time to really charge and then soak in maybe a couple of nights, two or three nights, I will then read them aloud and speak them into the air. And I think I've spoken about this on a couple of other podcasts, but I'm working with the element of air to carry my desires forth and out into the world. I know I've talked about, you know, using the element of air. I think I talked about it with the uh, grief rituals as a way of dispersing and letting go. So in this way, you're working with the element of air to carry it forth into the world. And I like to go somewhere where I'm a little bit higher in elevation, but it really just doesn't matter because it's about speaking it. From your second chakra, the desires come up through the solar plexus, that uh, belly button, third chakra, your power center. And then as you speak it, it moves up through the heart, through the fifth chakra, from the throat and makes a vibration of sound into the world. That's why it needs to be spoken. Speak it aloud. So go somewhere that you have privacy. So you can declare this and um, really speak this into the world. This is um, an act of destiny. You know, that your life isn't just fate and it isn't just oh, the things that happen to me day to day. No, you have the free will and you have the power to create destiny. You create and co-create. So all you really need to do is to align with what it is that you want and then ask for it. And that's what you're doing when you're speaking it into the air is your working with the elements, you're 
moving it through your own body and speaking it into the air, into the world, that ask, that physical ask, and there's no begging, you're, some, you're really kind of stating it. And then you act, you know, but that's, that's a whole separate podcast, the, the acting. So, or taking action upon it, I should say. Okay, so speak it into the air, work with the element and put it from your solar plexus into the world. And then I like to put these papers on my altar, either folded or face up, and I'll place a stone over it. I like to use, for this year, I'm using citrine, and that's because citrine works with the solar plexus and the sacral chakra. Uh, it has a connection to abundance and deserving what you receive. You know, it's not just about asking for these things, the intention and ask, but you have to believe that you deserve to receive it. Uh, citrine also, because it um, is connected with the solar plexus and that yellow color, it's connected with personal power and self-confidence. And this is something that you really want to tap into because that helps you with the next part of not just the ask, but then the act, the actions that you take. I also have chosen citrine for this year because the numerology of this year is a six when you add up the digits of the year. It's three number twos. So it's a six year. And with the six year, as I learned from uh, a new book that's out. It's amazing. I've been listening to him for a while, Remington Donovan, and it's simply called the book of numerology. It's beautiful. It's simple, but so powerful. So I was learning that with this six year, the color connected with the six year is yellow. So I wanted a yellow stone to really tap into that this year. So you can place a crystal over it as it's on your altar or on a special place, you know, somewhere where it's, it feels like a sacred, special energy. And sometimes I play mantras over it. Like I'll get my little iPod and there's um, specific mantras that I will just put on Spotify. They've downloaded, I've <laughs> downloaded them and I will just put them on repeat and turn the volume down really low so I don't hear it too much. And I'll just lay it atop the papers. So that it's kind of um, carrying that vibration of manifestation. So either or, it's or both, it's your pick. And that is the conclusion of the ritualistic part of it. So you can make all of that very special. You can, you know, certain parts of it as you set it or as you're writing it or, you know, whatever. You can add the candles and the incense and some music. You can um, add energy work, um, you know, ceremonial cacao as you're uh, you're drinking as you're doing this, you know, you can, you can take it to all kinds of levels. For those that love that, I do, you know, go for it. This is special. But if you're like, that's too much, I don't want to, I know, then, you know, it can just be really simple. As simple as going onto my balcony and, and speaking it, you know, it doesn't have to be ritualized because it's really not so much about the ceremony of it, the all, all these things around it, it's really about the power, your personal power, calling it forth and speaking it. You know, that it, it's really about you. Actually, let me add to that, your clarity of mind and your personal power and speaking it forth and really, you know, aligning with it, asking for it and then ultimately acting on it. So that's the ritual part of it. And some ideas, take them or, or take as many as you'd like to do. But I have, after this, a, pro, um, 
the next step is that I put it on my calendar, my Google calendar on the uh, equinox, spring equinox, and then summer solstice, and then fall equinox, and then winter solstice. I have on my calendar to revisit these intentions so that I can, you know, assess, well, what's going on? What's happened so far? What has transpired? What hasn't? You know, what did I forget about? Um, what are some resources that still need to be tapped in? Maybe there are some resources that I can add that I uh, have newly come into my life or that I just didn't even think about at that time. So it's a reconnection with it. And you could do this ritual yet again, these processes of you know, placing the hands over it, charging it with your, your energy through the hands, placing it under your pillow, um, speaking it into the air, working with the citrine and any um, mantras that you want to play over it. You can do this again. And I do. I definitely do. I revisit it and then kind of reconnect with it. And I will say, you know, last year, that didn't happen. <laughs> It was a different kind of year, but um, this year, th that's definitely going to be happening. So may these steps serve you in calling in and bringing forth that which you wish into the world. Really take advantage of this time and know that even if you've missed this particular time of the new moon and the lunar new year and the two, 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 then work with the next new moon, you know, maybe revisit it monthly. And, um, you know, if you find that you just can't quite do it on the new moons, any time is a good time. Done is better than none. Set your intentions and call them forth and do it in a very powerful and intentional way. Have a beautiful rest of your week. May this energetic new year start off well for you. Let me know if you use any and or all of these ideas and follow along as I make and create more on Instagram and TikTok. Remember that spirit guides but never decides. How will you choose this hour, this day, this week at the altar of your life? Thank you so much for listening. If you feel called, subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, and share it. Also, connect with me and discover more on Instagram at Amaryllis underscore Fernandez. Until next time.